listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guests. First time appearance, William Rogers, Ascend Business Advisory. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. And repeat offender, we didn't close the door quick enough. Brent Humphreys is with us. Humphreys Homes and Estates. Welcome back, buddy. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you with us. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800 306 1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Just remember that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone. For future reference, 800-306-1990, and we are celebrating today. I looked at the items of celebration today, and you know, I, I was wondering, obviously I could not go on without mentioning, and a great big thank you, today is National Guard Day, so we want to say thank you to all the men and women serving in the National Guard and all, all of our armed forces, past, present, and those that are going to do that in the future. Thank you. Those of us who have big mouths like I do, we couldn't do what we do if it wasn't for you, so we, we say thank you every day. Pick a pathologist pal day. I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, National Day of the Horse. That took a Senate resolution for that one. So, um... What's the big idea? Yeah, they probably got a big idea on that one. We'll see what happens there. And, uh, National Cocoa Day. National Cocoa... Yeah, having beaten anorexia, we'll go with National <laughs> Cocoa Day. I'll stick with that one. Let's look at the markets, though, because you probably didn't want to hear about my issues with anorexia today. But the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it is up 126. 128 points as we speak. Oil down 42 cents per barrel. Uh, we're going, we'll check that one out for you. We'll, let's look and see. I know I, I haven't looked at this in a while. There's two different numbers I always like to look at when we are talking about the oil market. Number one, in Taxifornia, what are we paying for a gallon of gas? What are most of us paying for a gallon of gasoline? <laughs> Being that Brent Humphreys is with us, we can't really ask what are we paying for a gallon of gasoline because... <laughs> what does gas cost uh, anyhow? Yeah, get out of here. We're going to have to... You know, just remember one thing, Mr. Humphreys, when you start saying things like that. What's that? I've got a mute button here. And I'll, <laughs> use, and I'll use it. I have no problem using that mute button. So, national average of a gallon of gasoline, $2.45.4 per gallon now if you are 245.4 now if you're in Alabama <laughs> we might have to talk about that two dollars nineteen point nine cents if you need gas go to Alabama if you want to spend a lot of money Taxifornia will be the place for you three dollars twelve point three cents right here in Taxifornia yeah Hawaii and Alaska are a little bit more than us but uh, I don't know if you want to go there for a gallon. It's too far to go there. Go to Alabama instead. It'll be a little bit cheaper. Uh, moving right along. What are the markets doing? The bond market, the 10-year treasury, up or down two basis points. That is yield down two. Mortgage-backed securities, the bonds, those are up six basis points. That means interest rates down a little bit there. So we'll see what happens. 11 o'clock is the time of day that we'll be watching the Federal Reserve making their statement. Might even be the last commentary that we hear from, Fed, from Janet Yellen as the head of the Federal Reserve. So we'll see what happens on that note as well. So there's the markets for you. A lot of activity going on in the markets. You want to make sure that you're watching 
even though we are at the end of the year, but there's you can you can make money, you can lose money. Especially, I mean, I've watched the the business channels. I don't know how much you watch the business channels, but the, you can't turn on the business channel right now without hearing about Bitcoin. And you know, maybe you want to go to Caesar's Palace. In my opinion, buying Bitcoin is like uh, putting money on the pass line. Eventually, you are going to crap out. Just the way it is. Just saying it like it is. Uh, looking at the news of the day, obviously the big news of the day came out of Alabama. I know that Roy Moore still wants to have a recount. Twenty-two thousand people went to out to the elections and wrote in a, a candidate. In Alabama yesterday, 22,000. The spread between uh, Roy Moore and the winner, 20,000. So think about that concept right there. We're going to have Mr. Jones will be seated after they go through and they, they, they verify all the numbers and all that kind of good stuff. Doug Jones will be seated there as the senator from Alabama. We'll see how long that lasts. But it's an interesting story, and it is a sad day for our Constitution. I'm, I, and I, whether you agree with Roy Moore, whether you believe him or don't believe him, irrelevant to me. The issue, the whole, the whole issue in my book, has to do with something called due process. And what's going to end up happening, we talked about this yesterday with Eric Early, candidate for California Attorney General. What is going to happen is the pendulum will swing. I don't know what the, the outcome is going to be, how it's going to happen, but we will see the day when a man is going to accuse a woman of something and she's going to be disqualified from whatever that might be coming up without due process. And that will be just as sad. I don't think that you should be able to ruin an individual's career without the due process. I know that it's about morality. And I know that we've got the flip-flop Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who, while she was getting money from Donald Trump, he was great. While she was getting money from Bill and Hillary Clinton, they were great. But now she's against both of them. Hmm, I wonder what that has to do with. We'll see about that one. Uh, got a nervous twitch over there, man. I don't know about that. I'll have to turn your mic down a little bit. I don't know about you there. Anyway, moving right along. Gillibrand. So that's an interesting issue. And then, obviously, we do have the lunatic in California. Yeah. Of course, I would be talking about Maxine Waters. Uh, last night, as it became apparent that Doug Jones would defeat Roy Moore, the often unhinged Waters tweeted a question. How many Diet Cokes did Trump consume while he gulped and waited for the defeat of his pedophile candidate? Now, I would assume, you know, it's kind of hard. I wonder what the law is. I know that Harry Reid and Al Franken, they go and they make their statements on the floor of the United States Senate. You ever wonder why they make their libelous statements from the floor of the United States Senate? Very, very simple. A senator speaking from the floor of the Senate has complete immunity to whatever they say. I wonder what that has to do with when you're lying over Twitter. Hmm, we'll see about that. But then again, we know when Maxine Waters is lying, her mouth is moving. It's pretty simple right there. Uh, moving right along, Peter Strzok is in the news again, and his friend Lisa Page. Unbelievable. Uh, there are now, we've now seen some of the text messages going back and forth between Peter Strzok and his love interest at the FBI, talking about uh, calling the president, in, or at that time it was the candidate, an idiot, a loathsome human. And in line with Hillary Clinton, you think about this one. I know I'm one of the deplorables, but they actually came up with the line that Strzok said that he can smell a, Clint, a Trump supporter coming into the room. I, I just report him. You decide what it is. And uh, moving right along, the PolitiFact. <laughs> they, they claim to be an unbiased source, yet they gave the president... Their dubious honor of the greatest lie of the year, the problem is that hasn't been proven either. So that'll be an interesting one. You want to believe PolitiFact? Uh, I don't know about that one either. Keep on moving through the news. Uh, what else do we have good in the new... Good. Oh, good. Here's another good one. The jerk, Colin Kaepernick, in the news. 
you know, I don't understand this one. He, they, they let him go and visit some inmates in New York City's Rikers Island lockup yesterday. I don't know why the police officers didn't lose the key and leave him there. It would have been a benefit to everybody if they would have just left him at Rikers Island while he's wearing his cop hater socks. Uh, moving right along, uh, you just you just can't get enough of that that the character that keeps on giving. Thank goodness, at least he's still unemployed. Again, just my personal opinion that I share with you every morning. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. It is Hump Day, unless you're Harvey Weinstein, and then every day is Hump Day. You just gotta throw that one in there. Uh, moving. <laughs> I think, no, 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 no. We, we were. You can stop right there, guys. Yeah, you got the, the drum roll. I don't need Gomer. He he passed away last week. We don't want to talk about Gomer right now. We're still still losing it right there. When we come back, what is the cost of waiting in the next year to buy a home? Talk to Brent Humphreys about that one. Tips for closing credit cards. Thirteen ways to profit off of the tax bill. We'll see what happens there. Got a lot of different issues to speak about, and we will. You can reach me anytime. Our offer number 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, shame on you. <laughs> but the replay is available. Ron Siegel 1. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit, and the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO-certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations. NMLS 21037 and DRE number 01869452. Are you a police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes. And we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 police officer sell or refinance a firefighter, <laughs> doctor, nurse, or teacher. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission. Lending partners will give a credit at closing. The title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives, too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. 
You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. Somebody mentioned that they're not hearing any of my soundboard, so I thought I would uh, just check and see. Maybe, uh, maybe we we didn't ask Brent what's in those opaque cups that he's drinking from there. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I guess it's ridiculous. Somebody's nothing like a little air superiority. Okay, so I guess uh, we must be hearing something. But let's move. Uh, we, I, I digress. You know, it's it's. It's Wednesday. I digress every once in a while. So we just have to have a little bit of fun on Ron Siegel Radio. While we look at the real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio, text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. What is the cost of waiting until next year to buy a home. We recently shared that over the course of the last 12 months, home prices have appreciated by 7%. Over the same amount of time, interest rates have remained historically low, which has allowed many buyers to enter the market. And I've share, I share these numbers, I'll tell, and I'm going to tell them to you again tomorrow. I know that you got to tune in. It's not a tease. It's just that they don't release the new home or the interest rate, the Freddie Mac numbers, until Thursday morning. But if you look, if we look back to January 5th, 2017, the Freddie Mac 30-year fixed rate loan was 4.2%. Today, or as of last Thursday, Freddie Mac fixed rate loan 3.94%. So the interest rates, you know, they're they're about the same as where they were. As a seller, you likely be most concerned about short-term price where home values are headed over the next six months. I told you what Chapman University said last week. As a buyer, however, you must not be concerned about price, but instead about long-term cost of the home. The Mortgage Bankers Association, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. All project that mortgage interest rates will increase by this time next year. According to CoreLogic's most recent home price index report, home prices will appreciate by 4.7% in line with Chapman University at 4.5%. And what does this mean as a buyer if home prices appreciate by 4.7% over the next 12 months as predicted by CoreLogic? A little bit of a demonstration of the impact that an increase in interest rates will have. I put. I don't want to go into all of the numbers right now, but think about this: if you're buying a a moderately priced home, and, and I know that moderate is different to everybody, but let's just use a simple number. I am a simple guy, and I can almost multiply by two or by four or by three. But if we have a mortgage today of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that goes up based on these numbers, and you go to a fourth quarter next year, two hundred sixty-one thousand interest rates today, three point nine next year, four point six give or take. Monthly payment difference is one hundred sixty-two dollars per month, fifty-eight thousand five hundred sixty-four dollars over the course of the year. Of the of course of the 30 years of that loan. So think about those ideas. If you're thinking about buying a home, now is the time. And if you want to meet somebody, let me know. I'll put you in touch with a great real estate agent in your area. Or if you want to find somebody, you might just look across the table from me. No, sorry, William, I was talking about Brent at that time. Brent, what do you think? Should we, should we wait or should we buy? I would absolutely buy. Okay, so you're you're because it's always fun because there's always a big difference between those of us that chat, you listen to The Economist, you listen to Freddie Mac and, and Mortgage Bankers Association, Fannie Mae, Chapman University. By the way, they won the, uh, they're the number one forecasting institution in America. I don't want to cause a problem with our guest, William, here, because I know that he is from USC. <laughs> but in the rank of forecast, uh, economic forecast, you know where USC falls? I would imagine we were always in the top five. Uh, well, you know something? That would be a great fantasy. They don't even do one. Oh. Unbelievable. UCLA, they were number four in GDP only, okay. uh, which I'm not a UCLA fan. Uh, I, I, I don't know about you. Are you a football fan, William? Yes, I am. I'm an ex-Chargers fan. And Okay. 
College football. <laughs> college football, USC all the way. Okay, so I've got three favorite teams in college football. I don't know if you're going to concur or not. I, I am a big fan of USC. My second favorite team is anybody that's playing UCLA. Okay. And my third favorite is anybody that's playing Notre Dame. I, I agree with all those. You can handle that. Go, with, go, handle with, you go with us. Okay. Unless it's Stanford, then we, we have to root against Stanford. I, I have trouble there. It's just when you're kind of a student there, we have this kind of, there are certain things that you kind of classify as your arch enemy. You got UCLA, you got Notre Dame, but Stanford's up there. We call them the farm, and we, we always, you know, are kidding about people. Oh, I think I heard, I heard some of the farmers there, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> We have the Stanford, the Stanford band is with us today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Brad, back to you. Let's chat a little bit about uh, real estate prices. Go. So, so I was saying when we were talking about the forecast, you're out there on the street, though. Correct. So you're, you're talking to people every day, all day. Are people excited about buying? Are they excited about the prospects of selling, maybe moving up to a bigger home? Right now, we're finding that a lot of people aren't excited about selling because a lot of people don't want to sell. They're staying put. And particularly in California, and, and especially Southern California, there's, you know, we talk about drought with water. There's a, a severe inventory drought of available properties. From buyers, you asked me, you know, a yes or no question, would you buy? And, you know, my unequivocal answer was yes. But to qualify that, I would say now more than any other time I've seen in the 17 years I've been in the business, I would be extra careful about buying because when you have historically low interest rates and when you have everyone saying my goodness you know we appreciate it I think 7.6 percent um, year over year so prices are going up inventory is low rates are at you know 30 some year lows you have all this pent-up buyer demand that we talked about on a prior show but so few homes to buy and so you have what some people would call a bubble or a temporary bubble and so you need to be more than ever strategic about where you buy I had I sat in the living room of a client recently and they said you know we want to sell our home in Oceanside I said okay great and, and I said the markets wonderful where do you want to buy and they said San Marcos but they said if the markets as good as you say and we sell is if we're gonna just turn around and buy aren't we just gonna lose all the money that we just gained and I said it depends on where you're exiting and where you're moving and in looking at actual investment you know MLS reports multiple listing service across brokerages I found that there are certain areas where sales are flat and homes are sitting longer and other areas where you know there's a 46 percent increase in pending sales but inventory is, 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 is dropping. And so it really depends on where you're leaving and where you're going. You can make strategic moves in this market and do extremely well. Interesting, and, and you know, just I share a, a I have a, actually have a report card for San Diego. I made that just because Brent was gonna be here. <laughs> year over year inventory, San Diego, down 28%. Month over it. month is down 4%. So you look at some of these numbers and, so here's the issue that I look at because I'm, I'm a, Whenever I see supply and demand in the, in the manner that you just described, Brent, and, and every, it's, it's generally when we talk to economists, right? you talk to 15 economists, you're going to have 17 opinions, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just the way it is because some of them are going to flip-flop. I was going to change their mind. Right? Yeah. They, they, they'll go both ways just to hedge. That's an right. economist world, right? Okay. So you look at it and you say it's supply and demand. If there's no demand or no supply and there's a lot of demand, buy, right? Because if you're buying a step-up property, sure. right, the bigger property, if it appreciates at the same 5%, and I'm looking at San Diego, 42-year history of appreciation in San Diego, 4.86%, 42-year history. Pretty much the long-term average. Yeah, that's, a, that's about as long as you get, for, right? For the U.S. <laughs> medium, it's usually probably about, say, a point and a half more than the U.S. Yeah. So you look at some of these numbers and you start saying, okay, well, buy if you're buying, if you're selling a $250,000 house, which I don't know if you can find one in San Diego, because I'm also looking at the median home price in San Diego, 587, 840. Yeah. But you look at the 250, just use that as a simple number. Sure. If that goes up and you buy the $400,000 house and they both go up 5% next year, you're yep. better off with that 400. You absolutely are. Right? So get into the marketplace and lock up that interest rate right now. Now, the other issue that we see, especially when there's low inventory and there's a high demand, we have a problem that comes up with appraisals. Now, we're getting closer. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. right, I just looked at a report that we were at a variance of 1.9%. The appraisals were coming in low. Mm -hmm. Now it's about 1%. How do you deal with that as a, as a real estate professional? I love that question. So the appraisal is something that we're more, more and more concerned about. I tell all of my sellers, I can get you probably whatever price you want, but if it doesn't close, I haven't done you any favors. We right. start all over again if we have a failed appraisal, unless of course we have a cash buyer who doesn't care, but people don't usually come and do all kinds of cash and not be sophisticated and, and caring about values. So one of the things that I would say, since most transactions are finance, the bank is going to come and you know if the buyer's putting down 20%, the bank's putting down the other 80. Sure. The appraiser works for the bank. They want to protect the equity position of the bank. And so you want to make sure that the home is as decluttered as possible, everything put away. Christmas and, ornaments, Christmas tree. It, 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 no, if it's in December, you can have you can have. Okay, so you can you can you can uh, dress your house up for the holidays. You sure can, okay. but I wouldn't bring out a lot of different things. Or okay. I mean, I, you know, a nativity scene's wonderful, but if it's in the middle of the hallway where the appraiser might trip, there's a sense of feeling a little bit cramped. And you want to have really really good flow. You want to have a lot of light in a property now. Um, there are a lot of people that got rid of all of their um, high energy bulbs and have gone, you know, the, 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 the LED bulbs. Yeah, an LED. You want to have as bright a lights as you can. I would not worry about your electricity bill when you're on the market or when the appraiser comes. I would put in the brightest bulbs you can because when appraisers come through a home, just like buyers, they're, remember, appraisers, they're number crunchers, they're licensed, but they're human beings. Sure. And they can be influenced. You can't influence them unfairly, right? We're aware of home value. Evaluation code of conduct, right? HPCC. Right. But you can make your home presentable in a way where it's extremely light, where it's completely decluttered. Um, might not hurt. Yeah, it, we know that with open houses, baked bread tends to put buyers in the mood. Don't go there, please. You, you <laughs> jump on all of those. <laughs> well, it's your show. You can go wherever you want, right? I'm just a guest. But you know, get the get the appraiser in the mood too. It, have them feel homey and invited. Make sure that there's good airflow. Sometimes homes can get stuffy. Um, one thing that I've known, I mean, I've sold hundreds of homes over the years and I've attended hundreds of physical inspections. I'm not a physical inspector, but I know what they look for often. Sure. And, and that's why you hire a, a, a seasoned professional. Correct. Yeah, you say seasoned because in California there are no license, licensing requirements. So we don't have licensed to pray, right. inspectors. But there are many, many things they look for. And let's just suppose that, okay, so when I'm walking through a property with a buyer, if I see a stack of homeowner's manuals and floor plans and the builder's binder and the HOA documents, maybe in a drawer off and neatly collated, I think, my goodness, this is somebody that's really... When you see binders and manuals out with all the appliances and everything, usually that is, is evidence that the, the owner has taken very good care of the property. Interesting. Why not have some of those out when the appraiser comes by where he or she can look through them? Interesting. We're going to talk more with Brent Humphreys when we come back about appraisal. We want to chat a little bit with William Rogers also about some year-end tax planning tips. We're going to get out to all of that, but I do want to say hello. Robin, glad to see you. Neville, glad to see you as well. Bill, glad to see you with us as well. Thank you for sharing. If you have comments or questions, feel free to put them in the chat box there, and we'll see what we can get to on answering those. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back... T ways to profit from the tax bill. We might even have one relatively soon. And tips for closing credit cards. All that and more. You can reach us anytime. Our off-air number. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. RonSiegelRadio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter. At Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. lending team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home you're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S- 
I-E-G-E-L lending team.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest-only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal Housing Lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Well, we're going to look at the Word on Wealth segment today being brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. They are the only ones that I know of that offer the Fast Pass Loan Approval. Fast Pass Loan Approval save ten to $50,000 when you're buying a new home. Give your real estate professional the opportunity of making same as cash offers, no loan contingency, with the Gold Star Fast Pass. 13 ways to profit off the tax bill. And being that we've got a tax professional in studio, I might throw some. I'm gonna, I'll do the, the story right here, then we're going to see how legit it is. Because I've got a big problem here. Brent, you're going to understand this one for sure. Whenever I see something that comes from the New York Times, I don't know if it's fake news or not. So this is going to be ways to profit off of the Republican tax. But you, you know, I, I know I'm not going to put you in the middle of all my political rants. Uh, but here's a couple of the issues that the New York Times has to say. If you're going to give to charity next year, consider donating now instead is one of their issues. Have your kids right away. New York Times telling you to have your kids right away. The bill creates a tax credit for businesses that offer paid financial leave to new parents. Get lucky with the timing of your inheritance. Only the New York Times could come up with this one. See, if you're going to die or, or you, if you're making plans on dying, there might be some strategic times for dying because... Are you serious? The, well, that's what they're saying. The estate tax, estates are larger than 5.5 million, subject to 40% tax. Smaller estates can be transferred with no tax. The, the Senate bill is going to double that limit beginning next year. So in the next two weeks, do not die if you've got a large estate. My wife spends mine. I don't have a large estate. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> There's a little nugget out there for people with their national bank accounts like Paul Manafort. They, they pay a little 12% tax on the monies they've been holding overseas. There we go. There's okay. gift for people out there, too. So put your money overseas. Yeah. Not a problem. Buy now, earn later. I guess what they're saying is bring your, 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 your expenses forward. Move to New Hampshire. 
or Alaska or Texas, Taxifornia, New, we've talked about this, Taxifornia, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Yeah, you're on the target list. If you insist on remaining in a high tax state, try to earn more this year. And remember, I'm not going to go through all these because I want to leave this for, for William to talk about more, more of what we're going up through here. But the whole issue of the tax plan, if you want upgrade your private jet, interesting. Um, the whole issue, if you want to know how the current versions of the tax bills look, very, very simple. Go to, either you can text or on the web, website mbelinks.com forward, forward slash tax plan mbelinks.com forward slash tax plan or you can text tax plan to 79564 a little calculator there will tell you uh, what the tax plan legitimately does without the fog of all of the stuff that oh I think Nancy's coming in we better get this one but we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it absolutely so that is the word on wealth segment today brought to you by our friends over at gold star mortgage let me get back over here because as i introduce our guest william rogers ascend business advisory throwing your alma mater in there william Thank uh, you. i get a little bit of, a little bit of volume i guess it's a little loud okay i'll turn it down welcome Thank you. So tell us a few things that we should be doing. I've got, we've got about, uh, what am I thinking, about two weeks left to, to figure out what we're going to do for, for planning? Yes, essentially we're in an interesting time because we're kind of like, I would say, straddling on a fence where you can do nothing and see what shakes out in 2018 that you might be better off or take advantage of you know the remaining time left in 2017 because uh, we're in an interesting time where I truly think, depending upon whether it's the House version or the Senate version that comes out, that you just may have a lot of people that go back to their employer saying one day, I'm sorry, I'm not working for you my corporation's working for you. And they're going to say, well, what do you mean? Well, I don't want to pay tax at 35%. I want to pay at 25% because that's the little nugget of how we see is that more and more people may call myself Ron Siegel LLC or Brent Humphreys Inc. or William Rogers LTD as opposed to the employee on a W-2. And, and I think that's one of the things that we may see eventually shake out is that high earning people will predominantly uh, structure them themselves in a way via some sort of business entity. Can you get away with that? I mean, because I thought that you had to be, if, if in some instances you can't, you can't label yourself an entity. But from either proposals that we see, we haven't seen a way not to. It, as though is what you're saying is in terms of can't, that loophole. That loophole is staring there that already numerous um, tax lawyers and, and, and law professors who've read through different texts of the bill is that that loophole is staring out there that numerous people, whether it's in a partnership of a law firm, you know, architectural firms, high earning people and, and companies will find ways to get creatively from a compensation standpoint and what we call labor relations to just essentially structure a corporation no longer the employee employer relationship to essentially route these payments through an entity to take advantage of the lower pass pass through rates so what, what do you think will end up happening then because then you start getting into can if I create Ron Siegel Inc can how would my and I, my Ron Siegel Inc ends up going to work for Humphreys Homes and Estates, right? Yeah. But he gives out health care to everybody. So what happens then on the health care plan? Because my the corporation doesn't really need to go to the doctor. I do. Correct. In, in other words, in the reality we get into the dollars and cents is, am I better off on this side staying an employee, but I may be at higher marginal rates. However, in exchange, I may be getting some benefits. I may be getting the medical, dental, 401k versus, well, if I'm Ron Siegel, Inc., but I'm taxed at 25% at the pass-through rate, for example, and then I buy that out of pocket and then also take a tax deduction for the self-employed health insurance and 
provide and put money in my own 401k, I might be economically better off. So a lot of people will be crunching in terms of the numbers and find that it is certainly much more compelling to be an actual corporation as opposed to staying a, a rank and file employee. So the question is going to be then is how does Ron Siegel or Brent Humphreys go and put that into QuickBooks or TurboTax? Right, you can't do that. You got to talk to a professional for that. It's essentially, I, I, I just see it as the gift that keeps on giving. You know, <laughs> it's always, uh, you know, it's kind of, kind of ironic is that when they talk about the principles or the intent of the tax reform was to make it simple, as Paul Ryan said, we'll put it on a postcard. It's actually it's doing the opposite, where it's creating more opportunities and what we call kind of uncertainties and complexities that people are going to need to go to professionals more, especially if you have all the Uber drivers drivers, the Lyft drivers, and all of the on-demand economy out there, you're going to find more and more people, essentially, who are shifting away from traditional, what we call employment, wage earners, to more <laughs> self-employment, and then versus people, actually, should I be a business entity? Now, what do you think is going to happen, though, and I, I know you don't have a crystal ball, just your opinion, in the industries where you have to be licensed... You know, I don't know that whether as a, you know, I, I hold a, a mortgage loan originator license and I don't know that I'm allowed to be a 1099 or a, a, a 1099 employee. I've got to be a W-2 employee right. in order to offer an FHA loan to somebody. How do you think that's going to be impacted at all? Well, the challenge in, in any tax law that you have come out is that you have essentially second iterations of what we call IRS Treasury regulations, revenue rulings of how people interpret it. So, is like take for example a lot of what people are talking about right now in California about legal marijuana, which a lot of people's interpretation of what they can do 280e, what's a legal business, and versus in those that they can deduct are based off of tax court decisions. But we are lacking actual what we call laws. So, to answer in terms of your questions early on, people are going to develop strategies that won't yet be proven until we have years later that the IRS introduces treasury regulations and revenue rulings and final regulations to interpret that, that whether do I have to be A, a licensed broker, or can I just be um, a person who does loan coordinations, transaction coordinators, who does files. And yet many people work in mortgage offices, by the way, who don't have any licenses, but they're generating leads, but they hang it with some sort of a broker. Will they be able to be what we call legitimate 1099 or do they have to be W-2? So early on in this first phase, you're going to have a lot of people who are going to try and be aggressive. And then eventually, as time comes out, when we get more certainty in terms of regulation and definition of who actually can be, that's what will shake out in the end. But that's traditionally five, seven years down the road. And by that time, the bill will be changed already and we won't have to worry about it. Or we can have different political control and then you can start the playing field all over again. Crazy. So, 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 so the horizon is good for Ascend Business Advisory. That's what we're all about, Ascend you to greater heights and more money for you. Sounds good. We're going to talk more with William Rogers when we come back and Brent Humphreys, Humphreys Homes and Estates when we come back as well. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. You can reach us anytime on off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. 
Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home. Are the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home. Are the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. Great subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRENMLS 217037 and 145502 and CalBRE 01869452 and one eight six six seven. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 306 1990 I think we got some breaking news here and I just want to double check and see if I am correct because I'm getting a feed coming through that it looks like the House and Senate may have reached an agreement the House and Senate conferees reach an agreement on the tax plan so that is breaking news just came across the wire uh, just a few minutes ago so members of the conference uh, special scheduled to meet in open session at 11 o'clock after several of them have lunch with the president and uh, they try to get the president on the on the uh, agreement with them so, so breaking news so essentially that would be their template and then after once they agree on what that template is then it has to go through another vote through each in the house and then the senate before it goes to signature right and and for the way i understand it uh, because we haven't gone through a conference committee in what they say 30 years they haven't done done you know normal course going through conference um that template as you as you referenced Basically, it goes to the House and the Senate, and they're not, no amendments, no changes. That's correct, and essentially it's subject to vote. And as you know, in the last times, it was razor thin. I sure. Mean, so it's not necessary. what it, we want to let the audience know is that it's still not guaranteed to pass. So Absolutely. It, it, it depends, because especially, I, I know that for California law states, there was real stickler about the ability to deduct state and local in, income tax, and especially with some of these fires that people are finally coming out. I may not be able to deduct my casualty loss. And that's really not sitting well with a lot of people. So explain that a little bit because yeah. I, the, the casualty losses is when they talk about not deducting casualty losses, are they talking about, you know, if, if I go and, and get in a car accident and, and I win a, an award, is that what they're referring to there? Or a casualty loss is typically when you have some sort of calamity or event happening. And most of it you think of a fire, flood, earthquake that happens that devastates your home. Because that's usually the most significant type of expense. Because to deduct a casualty loss has to be more than 10% of your income. So it's usually a very large event. More more than an automobile accident. Okay. But an automobile accident can, in 
theory, you know, qualify, but it's typically in terms of home. So under either proposal, they would eliminate that deduction totally. So let's take, for example, the events of this past weekend and up here in the Anaheim Hills area a couple months ago, people who experienced that who lost their home, they wouldn't receive any deduction if the law were to go into effect. Under current law today, you can get a deduction for what I experienced out of pocket, not covered by insurance. You get a deduction for that which is... Expense that's not reimbursed by insurance. Because remember, as we find out when you deal with claims adjusters and my insurance coverage and what it costs to rebuild, there's a certain amount that a lot of people have to incur out of pocket. That's Above and beyond the deductible. Insurance above and beyond and also what the maximum cash value that the insurance covers because they didn't have replacement costs or it's adjusted new market value. Okay. Yeah. So there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of variances in there. Correct. And, Correct. and it's going to be very fascinating. I'm sure that uh, yeah. we'll have a battle. Now, so now there's going to be a real battle yeah. here because at... And, and those are the hidden issues that are kind of in sure. there bubbling up that why I always couch in terms of people, they still have to go through two more votes. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so we're going to have two different issues there that are coming up at 11 o'clock our time. We'll be, we're going to hear from this, the, the conferees are going to be have a, a uh, presentation. And don't forget, if you're looking in the real estate world, thinking about buying or selling a house, we also hear at 11 o'clock from the Federal Reserve Chairman. So they'll be both battling for airtime. I think most people are going to want to know more about taxes than anything else. That's definitely right. the hot topic that's going on right now more than anything else because people are basically telling me unless they've got money buried in Cyprus that they can finally <laughs> bring it over and, and pay a small tax rate. It's essentially like as you know, Brent and I have been talking about what about my mortgages? You know, under some I may only be able to deduct at five hundred thousand and right. under the Senate, well I can still get the million, but I won't have any property taxes. But we're also finding a lot of little nuances because you know when you know, I deal with retirees. I've explained to you in terms of my mom's situation. You know, medical expenses wouldn't be deductible yeah. if we go under the house version. And there are people who pull money out of their IRAs and their 401ks to pay nursing home benefits, and they would be in a higher tax bracket. And so exactly. these are some of the little things that they have to wrinkle out, what I call <laughs> the unintended consequences, sure. is that yeah. you would essentially have people in a higher tax bracket that could be worse off. Well, I'm, I've yeah. been a big, even though I live in California, I've been a big proponent. I have no problem with the uh, the with them eliminating the salt. I don't, uh, you know, we voted for people that want to tax us as much as they possibly can. So I don't know why somebody in Nevada should pay less if they earn a hundred thousand dollars. Their their federal tax should be less than mine in California earning a hundred thousand. So those are issues. Those are just personal preferences. But we're going to see those issues are going to be litigated. Um, unfortunately, in the media. Right? I mean, that's where a well, lot of this stuff happens. It's not necessarily, I would call it, from the t case of being in a high state or a low state in terms of taxes. It's just the principle of paying tax twice on the same stream of income. So it's a double taxation argument in terms of what we're calling whether you should, you know, in theory, be paying tax and not at least entitled to some deduction for what you paid the state and local. But doesn't that so hit the fairness the, issue? But doesn't that hit the, the same thing with an estate tax? A state tax is different because we're only really talking about a minority of people. When you're talking about, there are only about 900 estates per year that actually pay an estate tax. There's approximately, if you wow. look at any estimate, there's about 3,000 that actually file an estate tax return, but it's 900 that only pay the estate tax. So it's a real misnomer to say that it's affecting family farms and small business. It's only the really, really, Fascinating. in terms of wealthiest states, it's a true giveaway. Well, you know something, I, I was listening to one of the, the newscasts the other day and they were talking about the carrying interest deduction and why are they leaving that in there? And they were saying the same thing is well, that... Well, they got to pay the donors. Yeah, it doesn't... Know, it does, but it doesn't... I mean, it doesn't affect... There's, there's, if they take away the carried interest, I think they said it's maybe five, $50 billion or something like that. It Very is, minimal but amount. here's a little interesting tidbit is that the IRS every couple of years releases some data of what's called the statistics of income. So okay. you get to see what the national average income, the number of 1040s, and the hmm. highest, you know, wage earning type of 1040s. So if you were to go in the statistics table of the largest, what we call the top tier of the income, it's not what we call wage source or ordinary business income. 
income. It's what we call source from capital gains. So as Warren Buffett would say, a guy like him pays at a lower tax rate than his secretary because it, when you take that real top tier, the one tenth of one percent, they're paying essentially at a 20% tax rate on $100 million versus a person who may have a business who earns $500,000 pre-tax and pays at 39%. So it's well, a huge difference when absolutely. You, you look at the actual published data from the IRS. I always uh, question anything, yeah. Warren. When it comes to these kind of things, Warren Buffett's a great investor but a big hypocrite. Just because, in my opinion, just because he also puts his money into a charitable trust so he doesn't have to pay taxes. So just another another benefit, Brent. We got we haven't had a chance to talk to you hardly yeah, at all today. Well, let me do you just feel say, left out or what? Oh, well, I'm I'm here. Well, it is hump day, you know. It is hump day. Very good. Well, <laughs> you, you've had me in every month and sometimes two or three times for almost three years. So I feel very very fortunate to be here. I would just say that based upon as I listen to this, my heart's pounding literally because I keep thinking what's going to happen with the California real estate market because if in fact. They grandfather the current up to $1 million mortgage interest deduction, and people have a high dollar mortgage or high balance mortgage. Do you think those people, if they're grandfathered and can deduct the interest as long as they have that mortgage, are more likely to hold on to that property or sell and get another mortgage? If I've got a million dollar mortgage and I can write off all the interest, I'm not moving. Right. The it's, other the other point that people but real quick is we're yeah. they're gonna they're gonna kick us off. They don't realize is how much of our economy is embedded in terms of real estate market. Yes. Because when you look in terms of the 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 chain of the ecosystem that you have got home builders, you've got retail stores, you have all these l different businesses and the amount of our right. economy that's based and it's also the first proxy of consumer confidence whether I have mm -hmm. equity or not I remember back in the days just after 08 where people were hoarding on to their money because they were underwater now as people are getting equity you're seeing them want to get out to bed bath and beyond again great information and there's a lot of information on that exact topic in the latest edition from Chapman University so you can go get their report and they'll tell you a lot of what Brent's asking about but be sure to set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A very big thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember... Make a lot of money. Help a lot of people. Have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.